good afternoon. Can't decide what today is like. I had the light on, then I switched it off because the sun was shining. Now I've had to switch it on again. And Rich was on his way out in his shorts and came back in, in again and said, I think I need to put my jeans on. So it is rather a strange day. I hope you've had a good morning. We've been at school as usual. And today it was fractions, equivalent fractions. So I feel like I conquered those. And it's lovely that you can join me for our quiet, short, reflective service now. And we begin with a moment of silence. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. And so we pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourselves as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So we are reading and reflecting on the Beatitudes for the next few days. And I'm going to begin by reading from Matthew, chapter 5, reading verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So, our reflection today is on blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This first attitude Jesus commends in the church is that we should understand and know together how much we need God. Human life is incomplete without a relationship of love with our maker. Augustine said you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. I'll read that again. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. We should never grow out of knowing how much we need God. And this is poverty of spirit. Jesus himself became poor for our sake. The Old Testament presents us with a God who is for the poor. 
the New Testament presents a God who makes himself poor. This is a profound challenge to our wealth and self-sufficiency. This first beatitude calls us to back to prayer, to contemplation, to being hungry and thirsty for God, to a spiritual renewal. And this is true for us as individuals, but even more true for our life together. If we are poor in spirit, then prayer and worship will truly be at the centre of our life together as we gather to be renewed, refreshed and strengthened by the Spirit each day and each week. And so we come to affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we come to intercede in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, for the world and for ourselves. Loving God, we pray for your guidance and wisdom as your church finds new ways of reaching out into the world with the good news of your generous love and forgiveness. Gift leaders with the innovation and inspiration that comes from your Holy Spirit so that your church may be more effective witnesses of your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as the world continues to suffer the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, we pray for compassion and fairness in sharing practical resources and medical expertise so that there might be healing and wholeness for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have influence over the lives of others. We pray that they would make decisions based on kindness and for the common good. And we pray now for those we know who are unwell today. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort and peace to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Christ, we pray for comfort and strength for those who are still isolated, for parents and children, for the elderly and for those who are suffering long-term illness. Lord, lift anxiety from those who are worried about the future, their jobs, businesses and financial problems. May they know that they are not alone, that you are always with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray for ourselves, for our plans that have been changed, for the people we've lost and missed still, for our hopes and dreams for the future. Strengthen our faith. Deepen our commitment to your ways and help us to better serve God and to see Jesus in those we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
trusting in the compassion of God. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into compassion, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and for ever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that was an interesting slip of the tongue. Lead us not into compassion. I think I've been thinking of compassion with Mark all morning. We've been talking about diversity. Well, I hope you have a good afternoon, whatever you're getting up to. If you would like to join us for the quiz, email Alice or myself and we can send you the link. I've done the quiz and I think I think it's pretty easy. At least I won't be answering the questions, which is usually my downfall. But whatever you're doing this afternoon, I hope you have a really blessed, peaceful afternoon and see you soon. <laughs>